Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer, and today we're taking a look at a Kurt trailer wiring kit on a 2020 Jeep Compass. Now this is gonna allow you to hook up to your trailer with the connection, allowing you to stay safe and legal. Now you can run this out of your vehicle, but we chose today to keep it in the vehicle. So with our four plug hole, this will give us running lights, brake lights, and our two turn signals. And that way, the people behind you can see what you're doing while pulling the trailer. Installation is pretty straightforward. Essentially what you're doing is attaching to your existing brake lights, and then there's a T connector. Now that's gonna connect to a module, and you're also gonna run to your other side. From there, you're gonna have a ground and a power wire that you're gonna run to your battery. So it may seem a little overwhelming, but step by step, I'll walk you through the installation. So now, let's take a look at that. To get our installation started, we're gonna open up the hatch and we're gonna take off this center garnish and that's gonna allow us eventually to get to these tail lights so we can plug them in. So first things first, you have one on each side. So using a trim panel tool remover or a flathead screwdriver, you can simply pop that up and that's gonna show you that there's a T30 Torx bit there. So go ahead and remove that. Go ahead and set these aside somewhere safe, and that way you have them for later. Next, we're gonna lift our co cargo carrier up, and we can set this up. So you're gonna see one, two, and then on the other side, three total Torx bits here, and I'm using a T20, so go ahead and remove those. So with those three removed, we're gonna remove the center garnish and that's gonna just kinda take a little bit of prying up. And there are clips, so just be careful not to break them and work from the outside in. And that should pop up. Now, before you pull too hard, there is this sensor here. You're gonna want to unplug that. That purple clip slid back, that should pop out. Now to continue removing panels, we have this little cubby here. We're gonna just pop this out. And that's gonna give us a handhold while pulling this out. Now, again, same thing, there are clips, so just take your time, be careful, and work your way kind of out and then towards the center portion. So as you can see, it was a little bit of a struggle. Take your time. You don't want to over bend the plastic because then it can cause a crease and it's kind of permanent. So again, be patient with it, but just kind of work your way back. So underneath this cubby hole, you're going to feel a rubber grommet. We're going to pop this out. Just work your fingers around the edges of it. So I've used a strap to kind of keep our plastic pulled back because we're going to be accessing back here. And where we pulled that grommet from, that's just the pass through from the wires on the inside to the exterior of the vehicle, which is going to route to our taillights. So we'll come back to that and run our wire through it. But for right now, I'm going to get our taillight off. So with the flathead screwdriver, you can see there's a slight little groove at the top. You just kind of pry in there and put your flathead in, a little twist. And then you're gonna see a T30 Torx bit. And so we'll go ahead and loosen those up. Next up is gonna have the taillight being popped out. So kind of give it a quick wiggle and pull straight back. So using this hole, gently I was able to pull that. So you're gonna see, this is where we have our wiring. So from here, I'm gonna unhook this and set my taillight aside. So with my wiring kind of laid out here, we do have our yellow, brown, and our ground wire. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna peel this back just a little bit. 
And that grommet, this is gonna pass through the grommet and then through a cavity up to this plug. So what I'm gonna do is pull the grommet back with a gap. And right now I have an airline and this is gonna fish up and be my pull wire for those plugs to get to here. So I'll pull this here and with the grommet pulled back, I can see down in the cavity, this airline. And if you don't have an airline, you can, you can use a string from the top side with a weight or a coat hanger or something along those lines. So now you can see this is pulled up. So I'm gonna tape my plugs to this and then we'll pass those through. So with my plugs electrical tape to my airline, I'm gonna feed this through. I'm gonna have to pull the grommet back just a bit to kind of create some space for it. Just slowly work your plugs up and take your time. Feed it from the back end. And if they get caught, just kind of be patient and kind of work your way up. Okay, and then once we have it pulled through, we can then remove our tape. And now you will see the factory plug is gonna go into our T connector. And then this plug is gonna go onto our tail light. So we can actually grab our tail light and plug that in. Now there is a little notch here, so just make sure that that's lined up with the notch inside of there. Okay, and now we have our driver's side done. So we're gonna go ahead and repeat the process on the other side as far as removing the tail lights. On the passenger side, we have our green wire. Now we're gonna do the same process as the driver's side as far as popping this plastic up a little bit. And there is gonna be a rubber grommet and we're gonna fish this up as well. So we plugged our plug into the factory harness and the other part of the T to the tail light, just like the driver's side. Set those kind of down. Get our tail light back in place. With our tail lights plugged in, we're left with a ground screw, which we can attach to the inside of the frame. Now this black wire is gonna have to be but connected up to the rest of the power wire and we're gonna run that up to the battery. So I'm now gonna route my white ground wire and my black power wire through the same grommet on the driver's side and that's gonna come out underneath the vehicle and that's gonna allow us to not only attach the ground to something that is safe in the car but also have our power wire run to the battery. With our power wire ran through that grommet, I could access it by reaching up on the side panel here. It was hard to kind of grab, but once you get a hold of it, pull the rest of that slack down. Now, what I did to run it was by starting by going over this wheel well plastic. Now, my main goal is to stay away from anything hot, moving, or anything that can pinch or chafe the wire. So, Running it with factory wires is kind of my end goal. So what I did here is I used this little bracket to zip tie, and then you can see I was able to join up with the rest of these cables. Now, once I got to this plastic sheathing, I was able to actually just pop that in the side without having to remove these bolts, and then continued on to the beginning of the engine bay. Now, I popped my hood, and just the same fish fish wire technique that we did on the rear, I did that on our engine bay. So our battery's on the driver's side. So run a hose or a string down there and that way you can attach your wire to pull it through. Now that I have my wire run up to the front, that's gonna take that tension away from the wire that we pulled through. So we're gonna clean this up. Now, part of that is this rubber grommet. We're actually gonna splice this and run our other wires into it. So I have pair of snips you can use a knife just being careful but what we'll do is just make a nice cut and now I'm gonna actually take my yellow and brown wires and kind of run this in the center here so when we put this grommet back in it's still protected 
Now we also have our power wire. So we'll put that in the grouping. And then set the grommet back in place. Now since it does have that splice, we're going to go back with the black silicone that's included in the kit and put that in here and that way it keeps it water sealed. Now also included in the kit is going to be a self-tapping screw and double-sided tape. So the self-tapping screw we're going to use to attach our ground to the side of the vehicle and that way it's grounded. Double-sided tape, we'll put that on the module and mount it nice and clean. So first we'll take our self-tapper. We're going to find a spot that's clean metal, part of the frame itself, but also out of the way of the plastic. So uh, let's see. I think I can mount this uh, on this inner, I think on this inner panel right here should work fine. So with our ground and everything fixed up in the back, now it's time to put the power wire onto the actual terminal. Now I'd use my fish wire again, as I said, and routed this up. Again, double check to make sure that there's not any hot parts as far as like exhaust or steering parts or anything like that that it can get caught up on. So let's pop this open and see what we're working with. So we are going to be tying into these connectors. So before we do that, we need to install our fuse holder. So this is included in the kit. Now important, you also have a fuse. Don't put this in until you are connected to power. Safety note there. So now we're going to splice these. And with our supplied butt connector, we're going to attach it to this power wire. So I'm just going to cut it off and yeah, we'll call it right there. Still giving me a little bit of room if I need to. Okay. So now, once you have those butt connectors crimped down, give it a quick tug to make sure that doesn't pull apart. Now, on the other side of your fuse holder, we'll put the ring terminal that's supplied in the kit on there, and that will attach to our battery terminal. Again, go through, make sure your, make sure your connection is good. So now, I'm going to get a socket, and we'll pull that power off, slip that on there, and cap it back up. Now with that tightened in place, we can go ahead and put our fuse in. Cut that up. So we're almost done with installation. Before I put everything back, I'm going to actually use a tester to make sure that our signals are being sent properly. And that way we know we're good to go. So with that plugged in, we're going to run it through the cycles daytime running lights on, left turn signal, right turn signal, and then my brake lights. So that was a look at the Kurt T connection trailer wiring harness on a 2020 Jeep Compass. So if you're looking to tow a trailer or have accessories that have lights attached to them, this is gonna be an awesome option. And I hope the installation walks you through it to make sure that you're ready to hit the road. Thanks for watching.